గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు శరచంద్ర ఐఏఎస్ అకాడమీ డైలీ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ అనాలిసిస్ ఫర్ ద డేట్ ఆఫ్ ట్వంటీ ఎయిత్ ఏప్రిల్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ టూ సో ద మెయిన్ టాపిక్స్ ఫర్ ద టుడే ఆర్ అబౌట్ ద ఐటీ రూల్స్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ టెక్నాలజీ రూల్స్ ఆఫ్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ వన్ పబ్లిక్ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ లిటిగేషన్ ఫైల్డ్ అగెయిన్స్ట్ ద డెసిషన్ బై ద బీజేపీ గవర్నమెంట్ టు గివ్ ద లైఫ్ టైమ్ క్యాబినెట్ మినిస్టర్ స్టేటస్ ఇన్ గోవా third topic is about the defense acquisition procedure dap rules fourth is about the details of self replicating mrna covid vaccines fifth is about the kuril islands and the dispute between russia and japan okay so starting with the first topic of the day that is about the information rule information technology rules of 2021 so here if you see recently the government has banned six pakistani youtube channels and also earlier it blacklisted 78 youtube news channels including 18 from india so other like uh, 60 are from foreign foreign youtube channels and 18 from indian news youtube channels have been blocked by the ministry of information broadcasting okay so why the reason the reason said by the government in blocking such youtube channels is the false and unfounded information disseminating the false and unfounded information and also inciting fear and uh, encouraging communalism and destabilizing the public order so in order to remove the means in order to avoid the unnecessary fears in order to discourage the communalism and in order to protect the public order government is government uh, block few youtube channels okay so let us come to the background of this it rules 2021 so these blocking this blocking of such rules are done under rule 18 of the it rules of 2021 so if you see what are these it guidelines particularly yeah so what is this id there are many advantages of this it rules of 2021 if you see the points one by one first one is creating grievance redress procedure so if you have any complaints for example if your fundamental rights or if you are uh, whatever the then it, if your fundamental rights are violated or if you feel uh, some uh, displeasure okay displeasure with the misuse of the platform then there must be someone to take the complaints so this rules made it compulsory to provide the grievance redress procedure for both ott as well as all the digital portals okay over the top ott as well as all the digital portals in case of in case of the displeasure with the misuse of the platform right so next every social media significant so the bigger social media networks must definitely hire a chief compliance officer chief compliance officer must be appointed by all the uh, social media firms by all big social media firms so and uh, so and keep a nodal person so this nodal person must be okay must be in contact with the law enforcement agencies throughout the day okay and all the time that means this nodal contact person must be in contact with the law enforcement agencies that is government agencies who are implementing the it guidelines they okay so throughout means at all the time the chief compliance officer is responsible to see that that particular social media is in compliance with it rules of 2021 chief compliance officers will see that social media firms will run according to the it guidelines 2021 and at the same time a nodal contact person will be there always in touch with the law enforcement agency representing the social media firm next and every all the social media sites must appoint a grievance officer this grievance officers would be in charge of registering all the issues within 24 hours and resolving them with 15 days so all the complaints on that particular social media site so all the grievances on that particular media site must be referred to the grievance officer and he must solve the issue within 15 days he must respond within 24 hours and he must register it to, to within 24 hours and resolve it within 15 days next very very important removal of content if suppose there is any content 
which is against our fundamental rights which is against our fundamental right of any particular person for example exposing the private parts nudity sexual acts imperson impersonation and uh, any content that violates the dignity of one person or fundamental rights of one person particularly women then these social media platforms must remove that within the 24 hours of receiving the complaint okay if suppose the if any fundamental rights like uh, privacy is privacy if suppose any privacy is disturbed then in that case the content must be removed within 24 hours of receiving the complaint next then all the social media must report monthly report must be provided okay and how for the about these complaints and remedies and there must be a three tier supervision three tier supervision in this three tier supervision first comes self regulation okay self regulation new publishers will be self regulation first next second is a self regulatory body by a retired judge or any prominent person second is a self regulatory body by a retired judge and third is the oversight oversight from the it and broadcast ministry so this is the three type supervision so at the lower level it is self regulation at the middle level it is a retired judge or a prominent person heading the self regulatory body and at the higher level it is ministry of information and broadcasting okay so also includes the courts of practice and grievance committee right so yeah so some sites some particular social media companies are regarded as the intermediaries okay are regarded as the intermediaries so the status of intermediary is obtained only if only only after 50 lakh registered members are there in that particular social media intermediary if suppose any new uh, for example facebook is there twitter is there whatsapp is there whatever the social media company is there then if it has more than 50 lakh registered members then it would be classified as the major social media intermediaries okay so the definition of major social media intermediaries whichever social media it is if it has more than 50 lakh registered members then it is considered as a major social media intermediary next so what are the punishment prescribed if uh, does not obey the law so then companies even the bigger companies multi-millionaire companies like uh, facebook twitter instagram whatsapp messenger whatever it is whichever company it is it will face a ban if they do not comply with the it rules of 2021 and at the same time they may lose the status of intermediary if they do not because when will they get the status of intermediary if number of registered you registered members are more than 50 lakh they will get the intermediary status now if they do not comply with this particular rules they will lose the status of intermediary and they may face the criminal charges okay so if you see most of the time there will be a conflict between right to speech and privacy <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so right to speech on other side so privacy on the other side so if you enjoy fund unlimited fundamental rights so fundamental rights are not absolute if your fundamental rights are absolute then they may violate the other fund others fundamental rights that's why fundamental rights are restricted to that extent where it will not disturb the fundamental rights or others so if whatever you talk or whatever you show so freedom so freedom of on social media may lead to the disturbance of privacy of others so may lead to the disturbance in others fundamental rights that's the reason why these it rules are framed to control the content to uh, means to control the content as well as to avoid the violation of fundamental rights and disturbing the social order in the society by the social media groups okay so because <coughs> it is very easy to access the social media it is very easy to publish whatever the content so for example before the invention of social media the only media present is print media or the visual media it is obviously printing a news in the paper is very difficult but the uh, publishing the same news in the social media is so easy that's the reason why uh, as the technology is increasing the question for privacy is also increasing on the other side then okay so that's the reason why as far as possible uh, these steps were taken in order to avoid any future disturbances for the society 
Next, a public interest litigation was filed against the lifetime cabinet minister status in Goa. So if you see, Pratap Singh Rane was a great leader in Goa, Goa sorry, great leader in Goa. He was almost 50 years, he was the member of Goa legislature. For 50 years, he was member of Goa legislature. Six times, he was the chief minister of Goa. Okay, six times. So that's the reason why, because this this is of, of course a great achievement by a politician in India. Being six times chief minister is not a joke and being 50 years as a member of legislative assembly is also not so easy. So uh, if he did it means he has a great support from Goa, he was, uh, he was a great politician and uh, so we can say he was a great public servant. Okay. So, that's the reason why BJP wants to respect this man by giving the lifetime status of rank of cabinet minister. If you see this man, so this is man. So he was given the lifetime status of cabinet minister. Lifetime status of cabinet minister. That means he will be given, he will be given the rank of cabinet minister throughout his life. Throughout his life, he will be the cabinet minister right rank of cabinet minister he will enjoy the rank of cabinet minister throughout his life but coming to the constitutionalities of this particular action the question arised that's the reason why public interest litigation has been filed in the court if you see on one side 91st constitution we have to get complete idea of what is 91st constitution amendment in order to understand about this public interest litigation so you come let us see what is this 91st constitution amendment act the 91st constitutional amendment act says that total number of ministers okay total number of council of ministers cannot exceed 15 percent of total members of legislative assembly okay this is what 91st constitution amendment act 2003 says so as day by day the number of ministers are increasing the government wanted to put a limit on the number of ministers that's why they said that 15 percent of total members in house total members of the house for example if the total members of the house is 200 then the number of ministers cannot be more than 30 okay if the total ministers are 100 number of ministers cannot be more than 15 however if the number of ministers are for example sorry if the number of mlas are only 30 okay only 30 then 15 percent of it is just 4.5 so this this cannot be means only five ministers it is impossible to run the government with five ministers so that's why for this for such scenario it said that at least okay it shall not be less than 12 so whatever may be the number of MLS, whatever may be the number of MLS, the minimum number of council of ministers must be 12, the maximum is 15% of the house. So this is the maximum. Okay. So this is what the 91st Constitutional Amendment Act of 2003 and after implementing this, after change, after making this change in the constitution, if you see the Goa, there are 40 seats in Goa, Goa Assembly, okay. So, and uh, so what is the 15% of 40? If you see what is the 15% of the 40, 10% is 4, 5% is 2. So, it is 6 seats. 6 is the number. So, as uh, there must be minimum 12, there must be minimum at least 12 in such scenario. So, already 12 members have been appointed. So, it is done. Now, if you give cabinet rank to Mr. Rane, then he will become the 13th, minister, 13th person in the Council of Ministers, right? So, this is violating the provision which has been added in 2003, okay? So, Mr. Rane's appointment as a, to the cabinet makes the cabinet members, that means Council of Ministers members to 13, okay? So, but the condition is it must be only 12. Actually, so the question of constitutionality, the question of validity comes here. So that's the reason why a public interest litigation has been filed in the Supreme Court. 
so we have to see whether uh, this particular action by the bjp government will be validated or invalidated by the court so we have to wait and see right next coming to the defense acquisition procedure so very important concept so because it is a concept of internal security not only the internal security it also deals with the make in india initiative okay make in india initiative is also there in this particular concept okay so if you see uh, the scenario today if you see the scenario today there was a war between russia and ukraine so on one side it is russia on the other side it is us so us is continuously us and other western countries are continuously keeping sanctions on russia so on one side uh, you have russia china so if you see india is mostly india is dependent upon us or russia particularly more on russia less on us in case of the defense inputs so in such scenario where there was conflict between us and russia then we cannot be like it's like our diplomatic issues comes forward now today if you see we are maintaining a strategic silence uh, not condemning the actions by the russia strongly because we are dependent on russia for the defense inputs what if we are independent in case of defense manufacturing so that is the reason why in order to make india self sufficient for in defense manufacturing so the government is trying to implement many rules and make indian companies better make means want to develop the indian companies and also to encourage them to manufacture more defense materials so that's why if you see this defense acquisition pr procedure uh, the target is to encourage more indigenous manufacturing in defense yeah context what is the context of this particular news so the uh, permissions were granted by the defense acquisition council in these given areas that is dap 2020 has been now revised okay so these permissions were given so for example in futures in future all the upgrading requirement do remember all the upgrading requirements important point all the upgrading requirements of the defense services and indian coastal guard shall be sourced domestically so if the requ uh, if the defense services whatever it is coast guard whatever the uh, material is there if it is even though it is regardless of nature of procurement nature of procurement means whether whether it is indigenous procurement or the foreign procurement so wh from wherever it's from uh, wherever you brought that particular <coughs> equipment upgrading requirements must be done domestically okay next <coughs> second point is import of defense equipment and capital acquisitions from the foreign companies should be exception okay that means not the usual so as far as possible this point says that as far as possible we have to decrease the import and a capital acquisition from the foreign companies okay so decrease it so it must be made only in case of exceptions not as a usual action so only rarest of the rare case only in rare cases we have to depend upon the imports of defense equipment and acquisitions from the foreign companies and should only be done by that too if at all import or acquisition is done then that too has to be done with the sanction of this defense acquisition council right so that is very important defense minister or defense acquisition council has to give permission and the requirement for the ipbg so the very important integrity pact of bank guarantee has been completely abolished now it there is no need of any integrity pact bank guarantee now in order to manufacture the defense equipment so no need of bank no support from any bank no guarantee shall be given from the bank in for that such facts next instead so instead of this this has been removed and earned money deposit will be employed that's it earned money deposit 
will be employed as a bit security for all the purchase instances with the acceptance of necessity costing more than so if suppose the purchase cost is more than 100 crores 100 crores then ipbg is not necessary just emd will be necessary okay so with this with this all these points says that indigenous manufacturing has to be established local manufacturing has to be encouraged and uh, foreign imports and foreign manufacturing in defense has to be discouraged so if you see the defense acquisition procedure of 2020 the new policy which took uh, which uh, which was introduced in 2020 so it, it replaced the 2016 procurement procedure okay earlier 2016 there was a procurement procedure now this dap the new defense acquisition procedure is going to replace the 2016 replace the 2016 so it is very simple so dap offers that all the policies and methods for the purchase of acqui and acquisition from the ministry of defense capital budget so must be to modernize the armed forces including the coast guard the point is very simple so it is it, there is not no much difference in this point but what are the highlights of the new policy is very simple that is the indigenous reservation indigenous firms enjoy the reservations so so in number of procurement cases in number of uh, indigenous i mean uh, procurements and uh, acquisitions indigenous companies will be given the priority okay so who is an indian vendor indian vendor means any company where more than 49 percent must belong to the indians okay indian citizens must be must not be less than the 49 percent of uh, sorry indian citizens must own and control the business and foreign fdi shall be less than the 49 percent okay that means more than or equal to 51 percent shall be indian stocks indian ownership less than or equal to 49 percent must be foreign direct investment then this that company is known as indian vendor okay so this is the definition given under dap 2020 right so now at least half of the entire contract value must be made in order to construct that particular equipment knowledge uh, indigenous that means if suppose a, a take well let us take an example if suppose you are buying some defense material for rupees 100 for rupees 100 you are buying a defense material defense equipment so this equipment at least half of this manufacturing of this equipment half of the constructing of this equipment must be done in india right at least half of the entire contract value of foreign acquisition made with the aim of constructing it in india and through the transfer of knowledge through the transfer of knowledge and must be indigenized okay that is first point next it also, it also encourages the indigenous content in the military procurements more indigenous material has to be in, included in the military procurement okay so next is at least 10 percent has already increased 10 percent increase in industrialization so in 20 to compared to 2016 in 2020 10 percent increase is given in case of indigenization and also few materials have been completely prohibited from imports there are almost 101 items have been banned from imports there so these defense manufacturing companies must buy them from within india only they cannot import these particular uh, equipment okay so so it has kept import embargo list import embargo list means in this list whatever the items mentioned in the list cannot be imported okay so yeah here embargo meaning is also written embargo is a government decree that prohibits trade with a specific country on a specific item okay so if it is a government uh, intergovernment agreement that is agreement between two or more governments then uh, means ab initio a single vendor means if suppose when you are decided to buy when you have decided to buy initially initially initio initially only one vendor okay when you have decided to buy anything if you have only one vendor initially that concept is known as ab initio single vendor agreement so 
so not to include the offset clause why because uh, in this case that means if it is a agreement between two governments and also government to government agreement if you, if is I, iga is intergovernment agreement and if there is only one vendor single vendor when we started the negotiations then government has chosen not to include an offset clause sir what is this offset clause offset clause is very simple if suppose india is india is here some foreign company if india is buying means a deal was made to from with a foreign company to say 1000 crore 1000 crore equipment has to be sold by this foreign company to india okay but at the same time if suppose in this the profit may be say 300 crores is profit so out of this 300 crores some amount may be some 50 crores etc like 50 crores or like that shall be given to again india which is known as offset okay offset class this particular concept is offset class that is foreign vendor must invest a portion of contract value contract value is 1000 crores out of which 50 crores have to be again invested in the india okay so i hope you understand what is this so india will buy 1000 crore equipment with foreign country but he may make a 300 crore profit so out of this 50 crores must be at least some part must be invested again back in india so that is the that is known as offset class so this is also in order to encourage the indigenous material okay indigenous manufacturing right next the next topic is details of self replicating mrna covid vaccines yes this is a good news that we are able to produce the vaccines which are self replicating mrna that means with the means uh, they are self replicating they become they will be self ready to fight when a new variant of the virus will come so the context is california pharmaceutical company developed arct154 this is the name of the vaccine arct154 which is a self amplify amplifying mrna vaccine against the covid-19 so what are the benefits it cures 95% of the time so in time of severe covid infection 55% in normal infection okay so when you have normal infection it works at 55% level but when you have severe covid infection it works at 95% level so how does this work how does mrna vaccine it is very simple the uh, it is simple to understand so this in this mrna in mrna vaccination what happens is the coronavirus spike protein is encoded by messenger rna mrna means messenger rna okay this the spike protein of coronavirus we all know so you may know or just listen this concept that is if virus by itself cannot do anything in the uh, environment all right so why virus is protected by a protein layer okay if this protein layer is gone then the virus is gone we can say that virus is dead so this spike coronavirus spike protein which is uh, which is there in this coronavirus is exactly encoded in this messenger rna why because i tell you if suppose this virus enters the body enters the human body and enters into the human body cell then only it starts working till then it is just a uh, it is equal to a non living thing it is equal to a non living thing so even there is there are debates whether virus is a biotic or abiotic but uh, we can say that uh, virus is biotic because it works after entering into the cell so few say that they are abiotic because they are completely like a non living thing when they are in the outside environment so only when it enters the human cell it will uh, start doing the action right so if you observe that this particular vaccination will have the coronavirus spike protein encoded in the messenger though so in case so this that means this virus no this sorry this vaccination that is mrna vaccination know the message what is that message about the coronavirus spike protein how is it what is uh, how it look like okay so the moment the this type of spike proteins enter our body that means the moment the coronavirus variant enters our body 
so the moment when an infection occurs then mrna will immediately orders the cell to makes the copy of to make the copies of this spike okay what happens if this spike protein copy is made immediately the immune system will recognize and respond to all these spikes because if initially it is low number low number of spikes are there initially one or two the immune system may not recognize okay but here this vaccine is producing more number of spikes which are very weak more number of weak spikes are produced by this vaccine so by which the immune system will easily recognize them and kill all of them so not only which are created by the mrna vaccine but also the real infected coronavirus this is how the mrna vaccination will work so if you see the Mo moderna and pfizer vaccines are two examples of mrna vaccines so they are self amplifying they are self amplifying they will amplify the protein spikes not virus they will not amplify the virus but they amplify the coronavirus spike protein this is what corona looks like i mean virus look like only virus virus will be somewhere so around that there will be protein spikes protein spikes so in between somewhere virus is there but when the person is infected when a person is infected with real virus immediately this mrna will produce so many protein spikes so many protein spikes so many protein spikes are produced so immediately the immune system will respond and kill all these protein spikes including the real protein spike real virus covered by protein protein spike so that is how this is uh, going to work so self self employ self amplifying mrna vaccine is much advanced over our traditionally rna vaccinations okay rna vaccination start responding only when the number increases considerably that means the number of virus increases considerably only it reaches a position of recognizable position then only the rna vaccinations recognize whereas mrna even the number of viruses entering the body are very low they themselves will produce so many spikes and immediately they make our immune system recognize the uh, presence of our foreign body a virus so it also includes four additional proteins that facilitate the amplification okay so of the rna right so so in addition to the vaccine antigen the main advantage is very lower dosage is enough okay as very lower dosage is enough in order to make this vaccine work okay this is a very actually we have to say that this is a good news that the california pharmaceutical company developed a arct 154 Uh, as a self amplifying mrna against the covid-19 infections and the last news of the day is about the kuril islands okay so before going for the topic so this kuril islands is a uh, like disputed disputed islands between russia and japan okay so the context is japan diplomatic blue book was released in 2002 in that it said that kuril islands is a illegal occupation of russia okay it explicitly openly mentioned that russia's illegal occupation of the kuril islands is illegal right so see if you see in japan it is known as northern territories in russia the same islands are called as south kurils so russia says that it is part of russia and known as south kurils Japan says that these Kuril Islands are part of Japan and called as Northern Territories. Okay, so out of uh, means since last two decades, Japan was silent on this issue. But for the first time uh, in these two decades, it used a very high-level phrase that is illegal occupation. Okay, to characterize the issue of the Kuril Islands. So before uh, going further, uh, let us see the map of the Kuril Islands. so if you see the map of the kuril islands this is the kuril island map so the kuril islands lies between japan and russia so here is russia here is japan so in between these kuril islands were there okay so on one side it is sea of okos and the other other side it is north pacific ocean okay so if you see this map you can see that this is japan this is also russia so this is also russia so in between there is kuril islands okay so japan is showing some treaties so there were several treaties 
made between Japan and Russia about this Kuril Islands. So in some treaties it is mentioned that the, the boundary is here, the boundary between Russia and Japan is here according to the 1945 USSR occupies the so Kuril Islands, so according to after World War II, we all know that the uh, Russian, I mean the US, after bombarding the Nagos, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, so Japan surrendered. So these islands were kept under the uh, occupation of Russia. So till today, these islands are under the occupation of Russia. But in the 1855, there was a treaty of Shimoda, which says that the border between Japan and Russia is this one. Whereas in 1875, there is Treaty of St. Petersburg, which says that the border between Russia and Japan is this. So that's the reason why this particular area remained as a conflicted area, okay, between the border, uh, I mean, uh, disturbed border area between the Japan and Russia. If you see this, uh, so after seeing the map, let us come back. So the f there is four islands, four major islands, which are situated between the Oxok Sea on one side and the Pacific Ocean on the other side okay so the fact what is the fact the fact is after world war ii russia completely occupied these islands okay the islands or kuril islands are completely occupied by russia and they are under administration of russia they are under control of russia but however both moscow and tokyo claims the possession of the particular these particular kuril islands okay so if you see on one side japan is showing these many treaties Shimoda Treaty of 1855, uh, Treaty for the Exchange of Sakin and Kuril Islands in 1875, that is also known as St. Petersburg Treaty. And also Portmouth Treaty of 1905. We all know, do you know that the Japan defeated Russia in 1905? Okay, in 1905 there was a war between Russia and Japan, Russo-Japanese War of 1905. Japan defeated Japan's victory in Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905. So, so obviously the winner is Japan. So that's why according to the Portsmouth Treaty, Kuril Islands were given to Japan according to this treaty. But Russia was showing the proof. What is Russia's proof? Yalta Agreement of 1945, that is after Second World War. And Potsdam Declaration of 1945, this is also Second World War. Established its sovereignty and the Japan acceptance of Russian sovereignty was established by San Francisco treaty of 1955 so these were the days of uh, uh, bipolar world where russia was completely dominating so that's the reason why japan signed yalta agreement and uh, ports dam declaration and san francisco treaty of 1951 accepting that these kuril islands are part of russia but however both japan by showing these many treaties and russia by showing these agreements claim their sovereignty over the kuril islands so that's the reason why Kuril Islands remained as a uh, land border conflict between both Russia and Japan till day. Okay. This is all about today's news. Thank you. We'll meet you tomorrow.